My name is Stanislaw Robert Liberto with AV Ultra, and this is lesson two in my free introduction to After Effects professional training course. In this lesson, we're going to pick up where we left off last time and complete our intro scene here. So this is what we're going to be making here. We have some of our elements come in that we put together last time. They sit on the screen for a little bit, and then they wipe all off. Before we jump right into the lesson, let's talk about what we're going to be learning in this lesson. We're going to be covering keyframes, parenting, and some different kinds of effects that are built into After Effects. I am working in After Effects CC 2017. However, most of these techniques should work in older versions of After Effects. You can download the exercise file from the YouTube link below, and let's go ahead and get started. Once you open up your lesson two file, you'll be greeted with a screen that looks a lot like this. Before I begin, I want to go ahead and change just a couple things. I'm going to come down here to my resolution. I'm going to change this from full to about quarter. And I'm going to come over to this button here, our fast previews, and I'm going to change this to adaptive resolution. What that means is our resolution may change on the screen here to allow us to play back. Notice when I'm scrubbing through on my older Mac here, that my resolution really takes a hit because it wants to play back as fast as possible. If you have a faster machine, you may not run into that kind of slowdown or that blockiness. But because I'm on an older machine here, that's what I want to change. If we refer to the example, we can see that we have our logo come in, the sidebar come in, and then we even have these other pieces kind of come in from the side. Our actual lesson two builds in by itself and then everything wipes away for a total duration of about 10 seconds. So what I want to do is I want to plan out my animation before I really start digging into this. I know that my total animation is only going to be 10 seconds long, and currently my composition is longer than that. My composition right now is 14 seconds. I can see that by going to my project panel and highlighting my composition, and I can see it is exactly 14 seconds at 2997 frames per second. So what I want to do is come down to my 10 second frame mark, or I can click right here in my 10 seconds, and I'm just going to hit the letter N. By hitting the letter N, that'll trim my composition work area to where I have my current time indicator. If I wanted to start it at the five second mark, I can hit the letter B, and you'll notice now my work area is from five to 10 seconds. I'm just going to change that back to zero, and let's talk about what we're going to animate here. Because I don't want to be distracted by everything else, we're going to animate things one at a time. So what I'm going to do is start with just the background and this After Effects logo. I know that I want this logo to come in by the two second mark. And by the two second mark, I want it to exist right here. Right now, this particular layer is occupying a certain X and Y coordinates. And I can see that by coming down to my After Effects layer, opening the disclosure triangle and reviewing my transform. Currently, it is occupying 714 by 536. If you've noticed in After Effects, wherever we have effects or different parameters, we have this little stopwatch. This is really the strength behind After Effects. Everything that we do with keyframes is done with this stopwatch. What this will let us do is actually create an animation for any parameter that has a stopwatch. So I know I want this to exist at two seconds in that current position. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this stopwatch and two things are gonna happen. The first thing that happens is my stopwatch highlights. If you're on older versions, it might highlight orange. If you're on 2014 or above, it's going to be highlighted in blue. Second thing that happens is we have this little diamond here. This diamond is our keyframe. What a keyframe is, is a specific time-based instruction. What this is telling After Effects is right now, at exactly two seconds, we want this to be at exactly 714 in the X space and 536 in the Y space. If I scroll to, let's say, one second, I can actually change this parameter and that is going to create a new keyframe. The reason that it'll create a new keyframe is because the information now is different. So if I drag this, let's say over here, you'll notice I have a new keyframe in my timeline, but if I use this little arrow, I can jump to the other keyframe and that's that same information that I recorded before. 
So let's take a look and see what that looks like. If I go back here and I hit play, you'll notice that it's moving from point A to point B. And really that's most of the animation that happens in After Effects. It's just animating in different ways. So I'm going to undo that animation right now. And instead of having it off to the side here, I'm actually going to drag it to the left. And I want it to go straight to the left. So I'm gonna hold on to Shift. And as I hold on to Shift, you're gonna see this motion path pop up. This motion path denotes where it's coming from and how fast it is. You'll notice that the further I pull this away, the dots in between get further spaced out. That's telling me that it's going to be traveling faster from point A to point B. As an example, there we have that first animation. And if I go back, instead, I drag this much further all the way off to the left here and play this back. That animation is actually happening quite a bit faster because it's traveling farther. The distance between these two points is much wider now. It's traveling from negative 1,626 to a positive 714. Now I just want this to be moved over just off my screen. I could drag it just like I did before, but instead I'm gonna use these numerical values and drag it to the left. I can do it by a factor of 10 by holding on to shift. And I can do it by a factor of 0.1 by holding on to command. So those are some shortcut keys that you have there. And that works pretty universally throughout After Effects. If you hold on to Shift, it'll do things in powers of 10. If you hold on to Command, it'll do it in powers of 0.1. And I'm gonna go ahead and play that back. So currently what's happening is this box is traveling from negative 409.5 to 714 over the course of one second. If I took one of these keyframes and I dragged it a lot closer, let's say to here, now that animation will be sped up because it is traveling the same amount of distance across a shorter amount of time. I'm gonna undo that here just cause I want that coming in at one second. And we're gonna call that good for right now. So we're gonna turn that guy off and let's turn on our background. And I want the background to do something fairly similar. I want it to come in from off screen. So I know I want it to end right around the two second mark, just like that other guy. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit P for position while I have my layer selected and my position parameter pulls up and I can click on that. And now that is made a keyframe. I'm gonna have this start a little bit before one second. And this time I'm just going to shift, click and drag to the right. You'll notice in this motion path that I have here that it is in a straight line. What you may not notice is that there are actual bezier handles attached to each point. So I could take my animation, something like this, and now it is going to travel from here from point A to point B. I could also grab these points and drag them like that. So now this is gonna give me a completely different kind of animation as that comes in. You can see how that's moving across there. It's moving across this pathway. I'm gonna undo that right now because I just want a nice straight line there. And we're gonna have that move in. Let's turn on our layer there. So now we've got both of those animating on and I'm gonna play that back just so I can kind of see the timing of those. And they both end right exactly at two seconds. And maybe I want this background to end a little bit after that. So it doesn't look like it's exact. One is just staggered on top of the other. And to me, that looks a little bit better. The last two that I have here are these middle bars. And these I just have kind of moving on. So what I'm gonna do with these is very similar to what we just did before. So I'm just gonna go through that very quickly. So now I have those four pieces moving on but I don't have my text animating. And there's something else weird happening across here. If you notice, my background is being obscured by this front layer. The reason for that is the way that our layers are currently stacked in our layer panel. Right now, our middle bars are on top of the background. If I take my background and place it on top of those two middle bars, now our rectangle is beneath this solid. And if I go ahead and I play that back, I can clearly see that. So now that we have that, let's turn on our text. 
And I have my current time indicator beyond where all this animation is happening. I could go through this trouble of finding those same keyframes and lining it all up and making sure that they all animate the same exact way. But instead, what I'm going to do is use this pick whip tool. This pick whip is also known as our parenting tool. And what this basically means is anything in the transform, so our anchor point position, scale, rotation, or opacity, will follow whatever it's attached to. In my case right here, I want this text layer to follow the background. And so now if I zoom out and I play this back, you'll see that that text is perfectly locked with this background. In fact, let's solo just this text and that background here, and you can see that they're perfectly linked. So that's looking pretty good. Parenting can be very powerful because we can have lots of things follow the same thing. There's no limit to how many things we can have be parents of the other. One caveat with parenting is, let's say I'm gonna take off this parent here, and I'm gonna do that by clicking on the parent and hitting none. And I'm gonna come back here. Notice that my solid layer is off to the side. And I'm going to parent it to the background now. When I play this back, it's still gonna be parented to that background, but in relation, to where it was when you parented it. So what that means is I had parented it while this solid was off to the side. When I have this parented here, this solid is going to be driving this text from this position. So they're still linked, but notice that that G is kind of connected to the edge there, and that's not necessarily what I want. So I'm gonna undo that, make sure that it's lined up where I want, and then parent it. So far, so good. Let's go ahead and finish this up. Currently, I have my After Effects Professional Training Lesson 2, and I want this Lesson 2 keyframes and parenting to come in separately. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to double click this, and I'm going to highlight just the Lesson 2 keyframes and parenting, and hit Command X or hit Cut. I'm going to click off of there, and I'm going to click back onto that layer and hit Command D for duplicate. Now I've got two of them that are occupying the same space. I'm gonna hit the letter V for select and just shift, drag down, double click, command V. That's a quick easy way that I tend to line up my text to make sure everything is going to be exactly the way I want to if I wanna break it up like this. Notice that my duplication is still following my background. So if I play this back, there it is. So now let's talk about animation presets. You may or may not know this, but in your effects and presets, you actually have a enormous set of animation presets. We have backgrounds, behaviors, a whole bunch of them. What we're concerned about right now is text. And if I click on text, you'll notice that we have 3D text, all these other texts. What we wanna do is click on animate in. And we have all these different ones, but how exactly do we know what these are doing? If we right click in this top three lines here, we can actually browse our presets. And if I click browse presets, what that's going to do is open up in the background a copy of Bridge. It's kind of a clunky way to view your different effects and presets, but I don't see any other way to review them currently. So now that we're in Bridge, we just wanna click on text and we're gonna click on Animate In. If I click on one of these, it gives me a slight little preview of what that'll look like. If you don't have Bridge, you can go to your Creative Cloud and download it. It is part of the package. If you don't have it, fortunately, you're not gonna be able to see these. So what we wanna do is have Random Word Shuffle In. And I like that, right? Because it's the whole word kind of shuffling in. And so normally, we can just hit right-click, place in Adobe, after Effects, whichever version you have. But what I wanna do and what tends to work out better is if we just click over here and we have Random Word Shuffle In. We're gonna drag that right onto our text layer. Now that I have that dragged on the text layer, you'll notice that it moved over to the left right away. And that's kinda of weird, right? So let's go ahead and play that back and see what's happening. Well, it's animating, but I, I don't really see anything that's happening. If I go to my layer, I can investigate that a little bit more. Let's go ahead and close these other layers if you haven't closed them already. And right now we're really focusing on this lesson two layer. 
and I'm going to hit the letter U. And by hitting the letter U, it's telling me what's being animated. And it says something range selector. Well, that's not giving me a lot of information. So let's twirl this back up and twirl it back down. And you'll notice now I have my text layer path options and something in here called an animator. And in my animator, this is really what we've placed onto our text layer. What we're telling it is we are offsetting this from a negative 35% to 100%. Below here, we have a position parameter. And this is really what we're concerned about. If I take this position parameter and I drag this, let's say to the right, you'll notice now it's coming in from that far side. So what I'm telling After Effects in this animator is start this all the way over here to the left. Instead, let's go ahead and drag it the other direction. So now I'm at negative 2,400 some. And if I go back to the beginning here, I can play this back. And that's starting to get there. Notice that it's out of order. And that's not necessarily what I want either. So like everything else, we're going to keep drilling down into our layers until we find something that works. I'm going to click on advanced. And you'll notice that we have all these different parameters, which eventually we're going to get to. But for right now, all I care about is randomize order off. And by turning off that randomized order, now it will build in one word at a time from top to bottom, like so. Now that's still happening a little fast for me. If I don't want it to happen that fast, I can easily just spread out my keyframes. Now it's covering that same amount of distance in a longer time. So now let's go back to the beginning and play this back. Now that's close, but there's a few things that don't feel right for me. If you'll notice the way everything is animating in, it feels very mechanical. They're starting and they're stopping precisely where they are. So it's, it's almost like an on-off switch. On, off. Things by nature usually have a bit of ease to them. One of my favorite websites when referring to different kinds of animation is the 12 Principles Tumblr. In the 12 principles Tumblr, it breaks down the 12 principles of animation. The 12 principles of animation were actually done by Walt Disney in this great book called The Illusion of Life. So in this example right here, we have something called the slow in, slow out. You can see what's happening here is we have a not so evenly spaced amount of animation happening here. It speeds up and then it slows down. We don't necessarily have that right now in our animation. So what we want to do is take our animation and ease it a little bit. So this is going to be a little bit advanced. I'm going to click on my After Effects logo here. Remember how this came in. And if I want to see those keyframes, I'm going to hit the letter U. And right now we have those keyframes. I'm going to select these keyframes here. And we're going to click on this button right here. This button is our graph editor. This is what's going to separate good animation from great animation. And if I'm going to go ahead and click on this, you can see how this is being animated. So currently it starts and then it stops. It is a straight direct line. I'm going to close that for one second. And we're going to highlight these two and we're going to right click them. And we're going to come down to keyframe assistant and we're going to hit easy ease. And you'll notice that our keyframes changed into almost these hourglass looking keyframes. And I'm going to open up this graph editor again. You'll notice how this changed from that straight line to this curve. It's a little hard to see what's happening here. So I'm going to stretch out this keyframe just so we can see that a little bit better. Speeds up and then comes to a halt. What's great about this is we have these Bezier curves. And if I hold on to shift, I can adjust the influence of how this is animating on. So right now, this speeds up and then slows down until it stops. And now let's take a look at that animation. It comes in. And to me, that looks a lot better. In fact, that looks so good, I'm going to do that for the rest of my animation pieces. So we've got our background. And I'm going to highlight these, right click easy ease. 
and I'm gonna click on this guy here and just drag it a little bit to the left. And I'm gonna do the same with those two middle bars. Hit the letter U and we'll open up this guy, hit the letter U and I'm gonna highlight all four of these and easy ease. If I open up the graph editor with all four of them selected, you notice that I have both graphs. I can actually shift and select both of those endpoints and pull them both at the same time. So now let's review our animation. There's one more thing that I wanna do here before we close out, and that's reverse all this animation. I have all this stuff coming in. I want it all to go back out. And I want it to go back out the same exact way. And I'm gonna come down to about 9.15. That's really gonna be my time that I want everything to be wrapped up. What I want to do now is animate everything out so by the 10 second mark, my screen is completely clear. Let's start with our logo again. And for my logo, I want it to start moving at the 8 second 15 frame mark. And so I'm going to click on my layer here. And I don't want to click the stopwatch because that's going to remove all keyframes. What I want to do is click over here to create a new keyframe. So what this has done now is it's creating a new keyframe and it's waiting for information because nothing right now is changing. And at the 920 mark, we're going to move this back off. So now if I play this back, it stays there and then moves back off. So now that we have that last one animated, I don't want to go through the trouble of going back and figuring out exactly where each thing begins and ends and creating new keyframes. Instead, what I want to do is I just want to select these two, hit Command C, Command V, and you'll notice what's happening right now is that it's replaying those same two keyframes. So it's not working the way we want right now because it's doing what it's supposed to do. It starts at 3,000, moves to 2,000, and then from this 2,000 moves back again because we copied and pasted those same values. I want this guy and this guy to be switched. So I'm gonna right click, keyframe assistant, time reverse keyframes. It begins at this 3,000 mark, moves to 2,000, stays at 2,000, until right about here, and then moves back to that 3000 mark. Now that's moving a little slow. So I'm going to just select this single keyframe and move it off. So it'll happen a little bit quicker. And I'm gonna do the same with those other two keyframes. I'm gonna select one at a time. So hit Command C, Command V, right click, time reverse keyframes, Command C, Command V, time reverse keyframes, and we'll speed up that animation by moving them closer. And now I just have my background. I want to fade in and fade off. And so to fade something in, we're really talking about opacity. And if I twirl this down, I can see my transform again. And at the bottom is opacity. The shortcut for opacity is T. So if I hit the letter T, it brings up just my opacity. If I hit my letter P, it brings up my position. If I hit the letter S, that'll bring up my scale. And my letter A will bring up my anchor point. And R will bring up my rotation. For our purposes right now, we're just going to be using the opacity. And I'm going to want this all opaque or 100% solid at right about here, the 22nd frame. And I'm going to click a keyframe there, go back to zero, and change that to zero. And so now that's fading in. And we're going to go to do the same thing at the end here. Just select these two, Command C, Command V, and time reverse keyframes. So I could keep finessing this a little bit more. I could highlight the rest of these keyframes and ease them a little bit. In fact, if I just highlight all of them, go to my keyframe assistant, hit easy ease. That's actually going to put that same smoothing 
onto all the animations there. If I want to finesse them a little bit more, I can select some different keyframes and open up my graph editor and adjust the influence a little bit more. The only other thing I did to this was actually add some more effects. So I actually added a drop shadow to a bunch of these different layers here. And what a drop shadow does is it gives me this nice little shadow that creates a little bit of distance between the foreground and background. So if I grab my drop shadow, drop it onto my After Effects screenshot layer, bump up that opacity, bump up the distance and the softness, you can see what that's creating here. And I'm gonna do that one more time up here. Bump up the opacity, the distance, shadow. And if I play this back now, it's creating just a little bit more depth in there. If you take away anything from this lesson is I want you to be aware of everything that you can actually add animation to. So just in my effects panel here, where we have my light sweeps that we created before and this drop shadow, everything that has a stopwatch can be animated over time. So that's it for the intro to keyframes and parenting in After Effects. In the next lesson, we're gonna be taking a look at masks, mats, and some simple rotoscoping. Again, my name is Stanislaw Robert Liberta with AV Ultra. Hopefully you found this information useful.